why is it blessed, O Messenger of Allah? Or why is it so good, O Messenger of Allah? He said, لِأَنَّ مَلَائِكَةَ الرَّحْمَانِ بَاسِطَةٌ أَجْنِحَتَهَا عَلَيْهَا Because that is where the angels of Allah are spreading their wings, O Allah. Allah. They will tell you that Palestine is a land of barakah, blessing. But what's frequently left unexplained is the true essence of what it actually means. Time and time again, the Qur'an will refer to Palestine and its surrounding regions as a land which erupts with barakah, blessing. It's, it's unmissable. Take with me the verses, for example, speaking about the Muslims of Bani Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَأَوْرَثْنَا الْقَوْمَ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يُسْتَضْعَفُونَ مَشَارِقَ الْأَرْضِ وَمَغَارِبَهَا الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا And we made the previously oppressed people inheritors of the eastern and western lands which we showered with blessings look at how barakah features again speaking about the prophet sulaiman allah almighty said wali sulaiman ar-riha asifatan tajri bi amrihi ila al-ard allati barakna fiha and to sulaiman we subjected the raging winds which through his command blew to the land which we showered with blessings the featuring of Barakah. Even when we speak about the trial of the Prophet Ibrahim, that far back, again, the virtues of this geographical region are once again addressed and highlighted. We delivered him, meaning Ibrahim, and Lut to the land which we had showered with blessings for all of the worlds. Subhanallah. Now, when we read these ayat, these verses, we may wonder how exactly has Allah blessed Palestine and the regions that surround it. Also, what does it mean when Allah said that this region is blessed for everyone? See, the scholars have mentioned that Barakah blessing is defined as the following. It is thubutul khayri al-ilahi fi shay As al-Asfahani, he said, Barakah is divine goodness that remains in a matter. Highlight the word remains. This barakah, this blessing, entails abundance and goodness, and it manifests in endless ways, as put by Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. Wal barakatu tatanawalu al baraka fi dini wal baraka fi dunya. That blessing, barakah, encompasses both the religious and the worldly ones, the tangible and the intangible ones. For example, the tangible examples or the worldly forms of barakah. Take, for example, its fertile land its abundant fruits, its majestic landscape, that is a perfect blend of plains and mountains and valleys, with its uh, blessed central and pivotal location, Jerusalem is anchored not just as a land of natural beauty and abundance, baraka, but it's the pulsating heart of the Islamic world. And this baraka, as we mentioned, is also expressed in the intangible ways, for example, by way of the reward of salah that is amplified, that's baraka. By way of the blessings in time and productivity, that's baraka. For example, reflect on the words of Imam Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi, who described his levels of productivity when he arrived at the land. He said, and I quote, Then we traveled from the lands of Egypt to the Levant, Sham. Our hopes high with anticipation. We entered the Holy Land and reached Al-Aqsa Mosque. He said, فَلَاحَ لِي بَدْرُ الْمَعْرِفَةِ فَاسْتَنَرْتُ بِهِ أَزْيَدَ مِنْ ثَلَاثَةِ أَعْوَانِ He said, there I was greeted by the full moon of knowledge and I basked in its light for more than three years. SubhanAllah. Barakah and productivity. The scholar Shihabuddin ibn al-Ha'im, who died 815 after the Hijrah, he authored his book, At-Tibyanu, fi tafsiri gharib al-Qur'an, in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And there is a well-known cemetery called the Cemetery of Babur Rahma next to the Gate of Mercy of Al-Aqsa compound. And it is said that it was there where Al-Ghazali composed his famous Ihya'u Ulum al-Din, the revival of the religious sciences, while in seclusion in a corner near this gate. It is a place of barakah. Asham is also blessed by way of the angels that remain close to the land of Asham all throughout the ages. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said, Tuba al-Sham. How blessed is Asham? The companions, they said, Li ayyi dhalika ya Rasulullah. 
why is it blessed, O Messenger of Allah? Or why is it so good, O Messenger of Allah? He said, Because that is where the angels of Allah are spreading their wings over. Allahu Akbar. What does it mean that the angels spread their wings over Asham? The scholars have said, it means that the angels are protecting it and they are surrounding it with the descent of blessings and the warding off of calamities and harm. Part of its barakah is that Asham is the place to be when life becomes difficult and tough and calamities start to unfold. Palestine has always served as a refuge for prophets and the righteous who migrated there for protection during times of severe hardships. Prophet Ibrahim and his nephew Lut made their way there when they were unable to openly practice and spread their faith of Islam in the land of Iraq. So did Prophet Musa. He turned towards Jerusalem when the Pharaoh's persecution of the Israelites intensified. The land of Asham will continue to play this role for as long as the heavens and the earth endure. And that's how you know your best friend in life. It's those people whose names come to mind when you're most distressed and you find shelter in their company. Likewise, when the calamities of life intensify, your refuge, our refuge, will be in Asham. And this brings me to an amazing dream that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once saw. Listen carefully, word for word. He said, Bayna ananaim, Idh ra'aytu amud al kitabi uhtumila min tahti ra'si while I was sleeping. I saw the pillar of the book lifted from beneath my head. In another narration, he said, Wa idha huwa nurun sati'un bayna yaday. It appeared suddenly as a bright light before me. فَظَنَنْتُ أَنَّهُ مَذْهُوبٌ بِهِ فَأَتْبَعْتُهُ بَصَرِي فَعُمِدَ بِهِ إِلَى الشَّامِ And I thought that it's going to be taken away from me. So I followed it with my eyes and it was taken to Asham. And then he concluded by saying, أَلَا وَإِنَّ الْإِمَانَ حِينَ تَقَعُ الْفِتَنْ بِالشَّامِ He said, indeed, Iman, faith, when the trials occur, will be in Asham. A very graphic narration. But what is the pillar of the book that was lifted from beneath the head of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Ibn Taymiyyah, he explains and he says, وَعَمُودُ الْكِتَابِ مَا يُعْتَمَدُ عَلَيْهِ وَهُمْ حَمَلَتُهُ الْقَائِمُونَ بِهِ The pillar of the book, he said, is in reference to that which is leaned upon. That's what you do with a pillar, you lean upon it. He said, it is in reference to the people who will bear the book, who will bear Islam, who will uphold Iman, so the pillar of the book means the people who will carry this religion was lifted from my head, meaning they were taken from Medina. As is, this is where the Prophet Sallallahu rested his head. And this is where it all started. And then it was transferred to Asham. Meaning at the end of times, the truest carriers of the religion will be there.